You're, you guys are right, but you're wrong. It's not clear, it's clearing efficiency. You have to know how to clear as fast as possible, maximize as many seconds as possible, because obviously like there's situations like if I get a better leash or I can clear faster, I can be at an X spot faster. And again, every second early game, if the game is in a really snowball heavy state, as I'm sure you guys are aware, will save you so much time. Karth is one of the most important champs for, I mean, he's not very meta right now, but there's several things about Karth that not many people know. You have to know how to use three different ways of clearing. So example, the first thing you have every jungler has is their jungle item, right? Level one, you do 5x 10 damage burns. So let's spawn some camps right here. I'm gonna queue this, right? What do you guys, what can you guys tell me about this? It's burning for, why is it burning 11? Wait, did they buff this? It was, it's supposed to be 5x 10. Wait, when the fuck did this happen? Has to be a bug. I guess it's on blue buff. Well, I actually didn't even know that. What the fuck? Okay, anyways, let me open the notepad real fast. Okay, camp clearing efficiency. Karthik example. Let's get started. Okay, you guys ready? I'm gonna buy this. Gonna buy this. So, as Karthus again, your your damage burn, DPS burn from item. 5x11 on buffs, 5x10 non-buffs. I actually didn't even know that till now, but apparently I know that now. So the difference between, what can you tell me about Karthus? Like he has, level one has two ways to pull camps. Auto attacks, Q, right? So you have to know which way to pull camps in. So if you do that properly, you save several seconds, which I'll show you in a bit. So you got your Qs, you got your auto attacks, and you got your smite. So everything you should be aware of once you're doing your camps, right? And obviously your Q damage, you should be taking note of it while you're clearing, so. So step number one, we wanna clear as efficiently as possible. We have absolute focus, I wanna stay high HP as possible. And this again will save my clearing speed, so. Let's fast forward a bit here. And I mean, I haven't played Karth this much, let me set up in my chair here, but I wanna clear this as properly as possible. So Q auto, 8538. Now it's going down because that was a tick from the, from the burn. I can left click this and see the actual burn. So I'm gonna drink a pot here because it's leashless, not the best. They, they buff the camps to move faster, so it's a bit hard to kite, but you can still do a lot of DPS if you play properly. And here, it's gonna be in a weird range. See how this is at 54? I'm gonna queue this, auto this. You understand that? Because it pulls the camp to me and does more damage. I don't need the, 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 like my Q is two times my auto attack damage. So I end up doing more damage and still pulling the camp even better. You guys understand that? Because that's really crucial for your Karthus clear. Several champions have stuff like this you have to be aware of. And yeah, just be aware of your burn. I'll probably show another burn tactic here. I'm not any of you are like 100% aware of. Like right here, it's gonna be low HP. I can just I can just Q it, but in, in theory, you can maybe like auto it, but it doesn't really matter much. You can probably get the Q off and the isolate. It doesn't really matter that much either, but. Just keep spamming your Qs and Es. And here I'm gonna Q this, auto this. Cause it dies to my burn, right? And I, and I pull the camp too. So I got another few seconds saved from there. Probably can do another one here if I did it properly. Oh, this one I fucked up actually. So I have to Q this, but not the worst. You can, you can full clear car this just pre-315. I mean, I didn't even do that well. So I'm rusty, but. Remember, the burn is 5x10, level 1, on level 1 camps, and then gets progressively higher, so. Clearing efficiency, Karth. I can show you guys other champs we can do, and I'll do one more champ, I guess. Which champ do you guys want to see second? What about cutting with melee champs? Yeah, we're talking about cutting. That's not, we're not at cutting yet. We're at clearing efficiency. So, like I said, the four different things that they can account on a champ, the like Karth is. Qs, auto attack, smite, um, and the burn. Oh, I should click finish game. I'm seeing a lot of Graves. Graves is a very simple one, but he has a reload that you have to take into account as well. Melee champ. What the fuck? This happens. But you guys understand that's because that's like really important. If you're playing Karthus, if he's like one of your most played, you have to know how to differentiate auto attacks from Qs and then the burn also really helps off camps or not off buffs, I should say. 
Yeah, I'm just going to click finish game every time, I think. But while we're waiting, again, other stuff we're going to go over, like stuff like kiting, we're not there yet. I guess I can maybe make it in the same topic, but... Would you always smite Grompus Karthus? Um, typically, you want to farm, you want to smite your third camp. You would always not smite, but if you're leashless, you have to smite blue most of the time. I didn't do that, but... Kane? That one takes a bit, like, there's stuff you can do, like, Q2, your wolves, and blue. Holy shit. I guess you just have to press finish game every time. Seeing a lot of Kha'Zix, seeing Kane, Graves. Guess I can just, can mods do a pull real fast? I can't get in a fucking practice tool. Lee Sin. Like I said, I don't have to do go on a champs to share the clear, just stuff to take into account. Like Lee Sin has a Q execute. Lee Sin has a a passive where he does he gets more attack spare time he uses a spell. So like you have to just be able to rotate those properly. Kindred, it's like he's mostly an auto attacker, but you wanna like kite the there's like stuff like like kite the wolves over the wall so you're, you're higher HP, etc. Like the wolves wall. Olaf's a I guess I'm gonna do Olaf. Should I actually relog? Holy shit. If you're getting a fat leash on Nocturne, you can go W, but if you are getting a shit leash, just go Q. Well, that's a good tip. Thanks for letting me know. But yeah, that's your first tip of knowing how to clear camps more efficiently. We didn't talk about kiting yet. I'll do that on the next one because we're doing a melee champ. Olaf should be good. Can do Olaf. What else? Any other? Anything else better that, than Olaf? Maybe Nocturne is like way too simple. Olaf has a clearing pattern with his Qs, his axes. And my mods are fucking gone. Same with Dana. She has a clearing pattern with her with her passive. The attack speed you get, auto attack speed. I don't know why they're in a Discord. Let me just tweet this real fast. I mean, we already started, but. Sub seminar live. This one will be free for clubs so we can get some feedback. Also, some internal issues. Kha'Zix, I mean, Kha'Zix is really easy. Like, he doesn't have anything about us clear. Like, it, I guess we'll do Kha'Zix, fine. I can do a few more after, but this I want to get like the basic idea. Like the the jungle burns of one of the most important things I want many people like know how to utilize. Like I see challenger jungler is not able to do it or utilize it. So, all right, we'll go Kha'Zix. So this is the last time I'm gonna show in, in terms of clearing efficiency, where you know because he's a melee, I'm gonna show you how to kite camps and pull them. And it's actually quite simple. There's a, a learning pattern. I don't really do it that much because I don't really do do that much. But on like on buffs like red buff you can know when it, you should walk backwards. So, Kha'Zix it is. I'll just skip forward. So the, the pattern is basically three autos, and, and I mean two red buff autos, you can typically auto three times if you don't have a spell rotation. And on the second auto after red buff, you just walk backwards. Oh, there's a pull now. I'm seeing a lot of Nidalee. Okay, I'll do Nidalee too, but Nidalee's like pretty... Nidalee's a lot easier than you should think. So we're just going to Q auto always spell first. If you're fighting, it's typically... So, see auto number one, auto number two. It's going to auto again. Here I don't move backwards. Now it's going to auto. Now I walk backwards. See that? After you see the auto tag go, that's when you move back. Like here it's going to get pulled. See that? And I can just pull as far as I want to. Please watch the burn. One more, I could smite here. Boom. That's as efficient as you can be on a leash list. And then here it's gonna die to my red buff burn so I don't auto it. I get the Q isolation right here. And here I just wanna auto the big one. Does have my AoE spell up? Boom. Like, quite simple, no? 
It'll take you some practice, but I mean, I, think I have like thousands of calls this game, so it's quite easy. This here, I'm not sure it's more efficient because your W will be up for Raptor, so I think it's better to just do this like this in Eski. Eski's really good because you can max auto attack range when they're walking towards you. You don't want to walk backwards and walk back. So S King is another tip you can do to have stuff walk towards you. But yeah, I'm fully showing it, pull it a bit, walk in, get these all to neutral HP, and then my W and burn will kill them all. So right here, I missed one here, so I can just Q that. And these will all die, I can just auto this and I'm out. Again, burn, remember the burn, very important factor for clearing. So yeah, I'm wasting no time on these, very important with saving three seconds on really simple tip. You got two points if you're full clearing. Same concept. I can use my AOE to kill these. I can Eski here because I messed up. AOE again. Eski. Eski. Left click for always left. Oh, I forgot left clicking for HP. Very important. Always left click pick for HP. My auto drink 68. My Q is 181. So I can see if I want to auto this or Q this. So right here. I can pull, and I mean, it was perfect HP, it was literally 181, but in general, you just like, I could W this camp, and then have it walk towards me, and then Q this to last it, if it was like auto Q range, you know what I mean? So quite important way of saving time. I mean, here I can just pull it, wait for my Q, boom. Politics is very easy. So I'm gonna click on finish game, I don't wanna re-log in every time. But does that help you guys, Kha'Zix mains in chat? Cause that was like, the basic fundamentals of clone Kha'Zix on your first rotation. <laughs> don't word, yes, don't word either. Okay, we did Kha'Zix. I want to move on because, I mean, I think you guys know very simple ways of clearing better. I mean, every champion, there's champs that have, like, reloads, attack speed buffs, etc. You got to be able to get your rotation in properly on those characters to clear as fast as possible. You have execute champs like Elise, Elise, and etc. You got attack speed buffs on champs like Diana, Olaf. You want to be low HP on Olaf. A tip like on Olaf, I, I learned recently, like, a lot, like last year or something, you want, don't want to smite the big Krug, you want to be as low as possible and smite the uh, mini Krug after the big one dies, because you want to be as low as possible, right? And get extra attack speed, but yeah. Okay. Everything good on camp clearing efficiency? Any questions in chat? Feel free to ask. S keying, you just, S key is when you stand still. When you click on S, your, your champion stays mobile. So if you're like, if you left click, let's say your blue buff, and then you click S key, the S key while you're walking there, you're going to stand still. And it's good for clearing your camps and having them walk towards you. Not many people do that. I don't see many challenger generally do it at all, actually. And I'm one of the few people that do it. Because, I mean, I'm just better than them. I'll do nearly later. I mean, for now, like, I don't want to be on the same topic for fucking half an hour. You know what I mean? We're already, like, 15 minutes in on this one. But, yeah. Let's move on for now. There's a spreadsheet with all recent clears. Great. Okay. Let's talk about pathing. This one is very important. I mean, the lower elo you are, the easier it is to gank lanes. So, if you're silver, I don't think you should be playing champs like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. If you're silver, you shouldn't be playing champs like, like Lee Sin. You shouldn't be playing champs like Elise. You shouldn't be playing champs like, I don't fucking know. Like, are there any level three ganking junglers in this meta? There's like none at all. But in general, like, you want to prioritize a champ like Volley Bear level 3. Really good level 3 champ. A champ like... I mean, Hecarim was pretty good for a while, but now he's a lot worse. So, like, let's say Hecarim from a few patches ago. That's a really good champ. Let me get my VODs I had saved. Okay, this VOD. I got a few timers I want to go over. Very important information. So, again... If you're playing a champ like Diana, typically you're like, yeah, I just want to rush my level four, play for a crab, either reset or look for a gank, right? But, one sec. This is the most important thing that laners don't really do, that you should definitely do. So let's see the game state, right? Wait, what the fuck? Is my timer wrong? I was wrong, okay. So I start the game, I start my red, right? And this means I'm, I can't really, I'm not going to gank bot. I have a Janna, Thresh, or sorry, Janna Karthus versus Thresh, Tristana. So their bot lane is super strong, super defensive as well at the same time. And I'm just looking at mid lane. I'm saying, I can maybe level three gank here. He won't expect it. I have Sweeper. I swept, no ward. And I see he's playing really safe. So I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to go back to my top side. Also look at top lane. We have double melee match with very volatile. Camille versus Lee Sin. 
I fuck up my clear here, but I mean, I'm streaming, I'm not paying attention. But you shouldn't ever fuck up your clear. Because a lot of seconds waste. I could be at Wolves already. So, you'll see how I'm holding my W for the clearing. Because once this goes down, I use this, get my extra attack speed. Every time this goes down, you get attacks from using your spells, right? And right now, my play is, I look at top, I look at mid, right? Because these are my two proximity lanes. I should only be having my camera mid-top. If I'm resetting, yes, I can look at bot lane. But right now, bot lane does not matter at all. I'll, I'm never in a position to ever help bot side. So... I have two options here. I can either clear my blue and gromp and commit to that because I can multi camp. I have double AOE spells. I actually have triple with my passive. But I look at mid lane, I see my Kiana's one hit once I start this buff. And he's pinging. So I'm like, oh shit, this guy wants to push in the wave. And I believe Zach's going to gank here in the next three seconds. And I think my mid laner survives. So you see how I smite this? You typically don't want to smite this because you want to have it for the crab. But I notice I want to be there ASAP because, like, see this wave state? Is, sorry, I forgot to say, their mid has no TP this game, so killing him is really crucial, and if he can't push in this wave, he's basically fucked for the rest of the game. And you'll see, Zach is not here to, I mean, he's trying to kill the Kiana he can, but he's typically here to just help him push the wave in, because he has no flash and no TP. So I just say, I know I have to contest this wave, I can't let them push this wave in for free, and that's why we don't do the gromp there. And you won't see this often in hot, or lower elos, you don't see the jungler help push in lanes, it's more that the laner will either like, kill your laner and then try to push the wave in or they're just trying to push the wave in i don't know maybe your lane is like reset or something so if you see this angle to skip a camp the only information you have is from looking at your lanes i didn't look top lane because mid was just a lot more volatile and they were hard trading so we skip gromp there we smite our blue a side and get it here fast let's see what we get out of it so i flash eqw just to be not give him a chance to w me for hb this guy has no e from his gank we kill him we kill them both and we get the pass. So I'm looking top lane, seeing if Leak and TP, so I can be ready for that. And Wave is frozen, but I think he wants me to shove. No, actually, Wave is neutral. I didn't shove it. And then we get the crab. And he types nice because we just literally won the game off that. Off that small little thing, we won the game. But you see how, like, this is why you don't want to full clear every single game. There are games where, like, if you have really volatile lanes that are trading and fighting aggressively and they have no TPs, which you, you won't see TP often in low elo. If you can kill those laners once and just shove in the wave, they're flogged the rest of the game. So definitely look for those opportunities. And the rest of this game isn't really crazy. I have mid prio, I go for his top side. I zone their top laner. Here, like, I'm not even trying to kill their top laner. This is because I know their jungler's on dragon because their bot side's winning, remember? Our bot side got shit on this game. And Lee knows I'm here. But I don't even have to kill Lee at all here. I'm trying to zone out the wave. Why do you think me killing Lee does anything here at all? Look at what he's losing. We get three plates, and we deny the entire wave worth of gold. He gets XP most of it, I guess. But he lost three waves. And, like, this game is just pretty much over. Because I got a free early game as Diana. And I can just sit mid, contest his camps. And we're up like, so much gold on enemy Zach. And even though, like, our bot lane ran it, we still end up winning this game pretty heftily, so perfect. Next example from the same vlog, 218, regarding lane states and such. I believe it's 218. Yeah, it's this one. So this game, I opt to path bot lane because Urgot, you know, Alarm, Urgot, fattest leashes ever, right? So I want to path bot. We have Blitz Zaya and their bot lanes, Jin, Thresh. So both lanes want to trade and fight. So this is why I want to path bot lane. Exact same concept. I smite my buff. I skip my Krugs. I see they're fighting. And I don't need to do... Like, what is doing Krugs here? I know this is a free kill. And killing them here even gets me the crab at a higher success rate. Because their bot's going to be out of lane. I mean, Thresh will be at the crab first. He's already dead. But my, my, my Blitz can be there for the crab. So I just skip my Krugs again. Exact same concept. Exact same top 10 account. Like, if I'm skipping camps to get kills in fucking Challenger... Top 10 account, you can skip camps to get kills in fucking silver every single day of the week. So you don't have to full clear every game. Again, you want to clear as fast as possible. Very important to do so. But I mean, I push the wave in. They get a great reset. Jin misses most of the wave. I get the crap. Actually, here I outplay them. This, this, this ended up being a huge deal. Because I know this guy's pathing bot. So I drop my ward. I see him here. And we'll see how hard he gets outplayed. I have, I have HP runes. Kind of not the best, but... I save my e like I know I cannot fight this right. They're both full HP. My only be best bet here is to play off the priority I created, and my top laner I guess somehow is, he's in lane second, so he TP's here. I just E away. I got my damage off and just flash to my bot lane that I just ganked, 
I guess what that is, guys, that's a, that's a jungle diff in all chat. The game is just over. I haven't had GG in all chat. You lost. You went to crab. You shouldn't have gone to. My teammates are human in this game. And the game is over. So, I mean, I'll fast forward most of this. We just keep full clearing. Get our free crabs. Our bot lane's winning. I can I can invade his Gromp. Same exact concept as the other game we just showcased. I'm just here to get the camp. Deny fiddlesticks. And to make sure they can't walk to the wave. You'll see this game. Their ADC has like... He's down like 30, 40 CS, and he's a team, team Liquid Academy player. It's not like a fucking slow key random. It doesn't matter how good he is. If their jungler's out of the game, or our jungler's in the game, and my bot lane knows how to play the game, they're zoned off their tower. They can't play the game at all. Obviously, you won't have people this good that know how to pressure this well, but in theory, it's the same concept. Here I know I'm 1 XP off level 6. I go in. I think I... Did I kill this guy? Oh, yeah. You see how well I play that? But I miss Q here, but... A bit unfortunate. Hey, Guardian up anyways. Again, they missed the wave. We get plates. Press press tab to Let's see the CS. Up 11 CS. That's pretty much a kill worth of gold. Just like that. An early game. So, that's something you definitely should be looking for as a jungler. The, I mean, the matchups are pretty... It's hard to explain because not everyone will... Like, your laners won't always work their Raptors and stuff. But in general, like, this meta was all about full clear, leashless. But... It's slowly changing. If you see a Morgana enemy team, Osiris starts red side, but a Rumble goes W level one overheat, starts a buff only, etc. Stuff like that. So, okay, we're done. Topic number two. If there's any questions in chat, feel free to ask. But Why we in Discord VC? I don't know for future ones if I don't get my sub stream privileges. I guess we'll just do it on Discord, but this is the first one I wanna see what people's feedback is. Snowballing the lead and keeping the lead. Yeah, we'll talk about that after. We're still in I mean I guess I should highlight where we're at. What's the balance between ranking and farming? This is something I explain a lot when I coach people. If you're fresh off a reset and you're close to a level, you want to farm X amount of camps to get that. Let's say you're like half a level or like if you're half a level to a, to a level, then you want to clear like three camps. So like let's say your right side's up, you do this three camps and then look for a play. You don't go to your top side as well if you're blue side and you just get that level ASAP and just look for a play. So you want to play off fresh level spikes. Not like, doesn't matter if you're level six or level, like your level six is a huge spike, but let's say you're, you're playing like, I don't know, Chandler relies a lot on a, on a Q or something like level nine is a pretty big spike. So you don't have to hit like level nine, like 10%. You want to hit level nine and get on map, force a riff, force a dragon. So get those X amount of camps you need to be able to get your level nine, then get back on the map and be looking for situations for fights and stuff. Ganking lanes with the wave. I just, that does not explain. Doesn't necessarily explain it. I just showed it. Like this, sh I showed like three different examples: top side, bot side, and mid. The, the lane states. Like you should be able to know when the lane's in like in a slope push state or pushing back, etc. Reverse clears. That's pretty simple. I mean, I explained that to Tyler the other day, but if I can find a vod of that, I can definitely show that as well. I can add that later or like a future topic. Yes, like. Another thing is like a lot of people like they look for plays when they're not the strongest. Whenever you're strongest, it's like all gold is spent. You have your actives, you have your flash. It's, it depends on the champs you're playing, obviously. But there's so many different ways of making it strongest. Like if I'm playing Hecarim, Hecarim with no R, you like lose like I don't know, a lot of kill pressure is gone, right? If I'm playing Hecarim with no Ghost, we lose kill pressure. And there's a lot of different things, like different champions. Like if I'm playing Nocturne with no R, I'm probably just farming. If I know that like the maps in my in my uh, advantage, where like my bottom mid are winning, I can just force Dragon, right? While my ult is being removed off cooldown. So there's a lot of different things, like a lot of different champions, you can't really look for plays. That's why the champs like Elise and Italy are always at their strongest, because like an extra point in ultimate or just they have no ult CD, doesn't really do much for them. I mean, ult CD or ult, Levels and on Italy is pretty nice and at least do more damage, but it's not it's not like a game changing ultimate, you know what I mean? Like Hecker Malt versus Nilly out in a fight. Like Right, you know. What if you're playing something like Uder and you have put two points in R, should you ditch the full clear? No, you already committed to that. That's why like let's say you're doing you're playing Ola or Udir and you clear your red side. 
while walking to your top side from blue side, on blue side of the map being left, you have to see like, can I, can I skip a camp? Did their jungler start bot side? Can I invade his red side? Did my mid and top have prio? You have to already establish that already before you put the point in. Like if I'm playing Kha'Zix and I, like like that last example I should have cleared on Kha'Zix, if I put two points in Q and I walk to my top side there, I'm committing the full clear because I can't contest Crab if I know their jungler's pathing top. I'm just gonna clear all three camps top side, get level four and then look for, because I get the extra DPS and clear a bit faster. That's about it. On Evelyn, I mean, Evelyn's the kind of champ where it's hard to explain, like, you can, if you know that enemy jungler is cross map from you and you can just trade flash for a flash or a kill, I mean, just look for that situation. You can definitely look for a flash for flash kill on Evelyn if they have the proper champs. Let's say your top laner is playing Renekton, their top's playing like Nasus. You can easily tower, tower dive top lane as well. But it really comes down to the champs you're playing into. Like your, your champ can easily just flash with charm and get a free kill early game. Doesn't matter if you're not level six. Just use your flash cooldown, but it'll be a lot more volatile in your jungle as well if you're against like a really invade heavy jungle. If you if have like a Lee Sin or something, then, or a Udyr, it's kind of hard for you to play in your own jungle. So just make sure their enemy jungler is like a Siobhan or a Zac if you're gonna like look for that play that I simply want to contest you in your jungle, but yeah. Okay, playing from behind, champs capitalizing mistakes. Let me turn up sub mode for a second. Let me see what the, so far plebs. I'm gonna turn off sub mode, okay? I wanna see what you guys think. I mean, you guys can ask a few questions too. And how, have you learned anything so far is a question I have. Has this helped you at all? Is this something you would wanna be a part of in the future if I do subscriber only streams for this twice a month? Let's hear it, plebs. Yes, hi. We free, yes, this is sick, great, okay. Good to hear, guys, I'm glad. Sorry, I have to turn Submit on for the subscriber status questions, but again. Perfect. <laughs> the chat is so dead in Submit, I turned it off and then I'm like, oh, there's, there's everyone. I'm glad it's helping you guys. Anyways, playing from behind, champs, capitalizing mistakes. So I don't even remember like the champs. Oh yeah, so different champs have different play styles. Let me try to open up a ton of VOD heroes recently. I can just go through my VODs, honestly. I mean, I should have probably, like for next seminars, I'm gonna have every example listed, obviously. I had a few for the last category, but this one was obviously our first one, so we're not 100%, we don't have examples for everything, but I guess if I can just speak about it, I think it will definitely help. But for sure in the future, I'll have examples so let's say your bot lane I, I guess i get this so often my bot lane sucks they're 0 and 10 how do i win the game well number one is do i have three losing lanes one losing lane or two losing lanes right it doesn't matter if you have losing lanes if you have information if you know where the enemy jungler is he's just camping bot he's playing he's smurfing on lee sin he watches Insect, he's just perma camping bot with his thresh duo. You can't win the game. That's your magic. Like you, can, you know, you can't get any dragons at all. So, enemy leads doing every dragon. What is going through your head? What are you supposed to do this game? Type it in chat. Enemy jungle is playing Lee Sin. Already, champion doesn't really want to you know farm much, and he's just camping excellent. You're playing, I don't know, Diana, Morgana, Rumble, farm heavy junglers that don't really want to skirmish. Just want to look for a set of plays. <laughs> FF15. Okay, what are you actually doing? Are you just farming? Are you ganking topside? Ganking mid? Like, what are you doing? Counter jungle, play topside. Rift. Yes. So, it really comes down to what is more of a win con for you. Do you feel like if, if you're playing Morgana and take his entire topside, just as, you know, and we're, every example we're going to look at it from blue side, if you're taking his Raptors in red, is that enough gold and XP for you to carry again? If you're, if you're taking Rift, is that enough golden xp to carry the game it comes down to that does your mid have prio is a neutral it doesn't really matter because the lower elo you are the freer neutrals are going to be so in theory i would just farm his top side then go to rift because it's very low odds that the enemy thrush resets after you know the play they made bot lane runs to rift it could happen but it's very low odds in higher elo it's pretty high odds but 
just be confident to take his top set, invade his top to get deep vision, and just set him as behind as possible for just sitting bot side. So you're playing Morgana, you do AoE camp so fast, take his Raptors, take his red, maybe look for a cheeky play top, even though your top's getting smashed, it's still a number of advantageous situation. And their jungler's not playing a global champ, and their mid has no TP, it's not TF, whatever. You can look for the top side, look for the play top, take the blast gun, do rift. And then, yeah, go back to farming your camps, reset, and then look for the 14 minute plates. Or, I mean, again, he goes bot, he goes bot straight up, you go bot top from your base, and then try to kill enemy top laner, break tower, get like one key gold. That is how I win games with losing bots. Right now, I mean, it's pretty bot centric, so you should be camping bot lane more often, but. Try to not XP from top laner? No, I don't agree with that. If Rift is up and they're doing Dragon, you should always go for Rift. Rift is like the most broken objective really good. You get so much free gold in XP. I mean, not. I mean the XP is like good, but it's not like a game-changing XP, but it's just... Neutrals give a lot of XP, so if you can like solo Rift, pretty nice to get it off, but... That's what I would do. Like, let me see if I have recent games to go over. I mean, this game... I think all of our fucking lanes a lot. I can... I mean... Yeah, I got Rift this. Oh, this is a perfect game for this. Not wrong one, wrong one. Okay, this Morgana game, I just realized it was actually the perfect game. Awesome. That's what, small World. Literally the last game I played. A perfect example for this. I got Rift this game, I'm pretty sure, right? So, as you can see, I showed you guys the play bot lane. We literally just played this game. We got fucking clobbered. Guess who gets Dragon, guys? So, this means, obviously... Obviously, if we have like top pro and mid pro, which we don't have the entire game, I'd walk to his top side here. Actually, no, I do walk in his top side. Okay, perfect. I do walk in his top side here. Obviously, this is really important here. I want to get six before entering his top side. I do crap so fast, so I just do crap first, so I can be a bit more safe in his jungle or more offensive. So, Karthus does that, and then we get mid prio and top prio. Even though our fucking bot lane is beyond dog shit, I can still play offensively here because I know they're Lulu shield on dragon. And unless this is like a challenger fucking like LCS support, these fucking losers just all path bot lane. So, Karthus greets his red side. I take his blue side. I just waited because I thought he would run, he would reset and run top side, but he didn't. So, boom, we take Karthus's blue and he's just so removed from the game. Doing, doing this is a bit risky and doing this is a bit risky too, but I know at this point I have no win condition. I need to be able to read this Rift Herald as much as possible. We get the Rift Herald. Let's see our gold right now. It's 3,000 to 3,000. Even though his bot's smurfing on mine, doesn't really matter. Their bottom mid are smurfing, but yeah. We get the Rift Herald. And I can't really go top because it's the wave is pretty big. So I just clear my camps first, I think. Yeah. And then I still want to go top lane. But our top lane is like freezing. So instead, I just go to see what I can do. I show an award. I'm like, what? I can't do much right now on this timer. They shit on my bot lane again. I just push in mid. And I just rift mid. But in general, if your top laner is like winning or you can pressure top, here you would look for the play top. But the wave is too fat, so it's kind of hard to TB1 set here. And I think I'd die afterwards. But yeah, in theory, like exact, this exhibit was exactly what you should do. Take top side. Take your top side if there's nothing else to do. And then if your top laner is volatile, after you got rift, you can look for a play there. But yeah. Perfect, that was a good example, but we didn't get the rift off and the kill, but Set's already a really very strong 1v2 champion, so Yeah, you get so much gold from getting rift and stuff on, on first tower. Make sure to drop it at two and a half plates Would you dive top if it was Jason or set? Yes, of course. If the champion's a lot more volatile and the wave is crashing But the wave was slow pushing the TF blade and he couldn't really push. He's playing Shen. Shen pushes really slow until he has Sunfire Bammy And set in general is gonna 1v2. Champ's really fucking broken right now, so that is what you should do. Okay. Barry's Rift on an even winning lane, but only got two plays for his Rift on a losing lane, but get first tower. And that comes down to if your laner can get the five plays on his own. If your laner can just... If the laner wants to keep the enemy laner in lane... I mean, you guys are... You guys aren't playing challenger games. Just get it wherever you get the most resources. Your most consistent way of climbing should be playing a carry. Or... Playing to enable. Champs that enable your champions. You can play like Volley Bear, get your lanes ahead, look for early skirmishes, get them gold, die, frontline for them. If you know how to carry, like again, obviously old Hecarim would be a very good example of champs you should play for gold and XP on. But in general, like in higher elos, 
if your lane's winning really hard and wants them to stay in lane, you don't really, if it's like one or two plates, you don't play it. Because they can just get the plates himself, you play for another lane. That's typically how the high evil consensus is, or like the professional play. Rift usage on Rift 1. But yeah. Carry roll, Loilo low versus chat versus play stall. So like I said, we just went over that right now. Different junglers do different things. I mean, this sample size is pretty low, but... Why do these junglers have the highest win rate? Why do you guys think? Because they are low income, low XP util like needed, and they just offer so much from ahead or from behind. So if you're playing Skarner, you already increase your, win your chances of winning. Obviously, they're not the best high-low champs because they can get like countered pretty hard and they can get invaded all game. But in low elo, people do not know how to play jungle. You can get away with playing anything. So let's say you're a gold player. Let's say the highest rank. You see Morgana up there. You see Fiddlesticks, Zin Zhao, Trundle, Nocturne. Again... All of these champs have so much utility if you're ahead or behind, right? If you're behind on Morgana, you have your shield, you have your ult, you have your root. If you're behind on Fiddle, you have your silence, you have your E, you have your AoE, you can have your Zanyas to stall time. Zin Zhao, you can go and you can use your R, stall time, st uh, knock up, slow, soak damage. Trundle, you're behind. Pillar, R, Nocturne, E, R. Like, the, all these champions have utility. Champions like Elise, hard to see her tops or her when it's so high, because, I mean... She only has a stun. She can dive early game. That's about it. She does dragons okay at six, but for the most part, if you're playing these champions that carry, like, are played to carry, why are they so low right now? Because you can't really carry anymore. They've made their role. I mean, I'm not ranting right now. It's just, it is what it is, right? Like, you see all these champions. Used to be a carry. Used to be a carry. 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 I don't know why this guy's going right so low. It's fucking weird, but you get the idea, right? You, you are already putting yourself at a disadvantage by not playing enabling champions or just utility champions. But that was in gold. That's why the win rate on Rumble was so low. But you get the idea, right? Even in high low, like the jungle role is just an amplifier, an enabler, and not much of a carry unless your entire comp is playing around you. So, like I said, if you're playing in silver elo, gold, the champions should be looking at our... Let me see. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really recommend more. She's pretty high win rate, but I don't know. Do silver players not have clear on Morgana? Do they not have to like pull their raptors and red and do them at the same time? I'm not sure. Great champion I recommend. Again, Volibear has been an S tier on my tier list for a very long time. He is so easy to play. He does so much. He can do dragons fast, he can skirmish well, he can tower dive, he can clear like he does everything perfectly. This is my number one champ I recommend. If you want to get free elo, I've been saying play Volibear for the last like three months. After he got the uh, the recent buff, all my clients that I coach have been playing, playing Rumble and or not Vol Rumble Volibear and they've been climbing like very high. Play Volibear. Trundle got several buffs in a row. He's gonna next patch when when <laughs> catch up XP is introduced, he's gonna be the best one of the game. I promise you, if the catch up XP thing goes through, you're gonna see Trundle and LCS every single game. I promise. Trundle Volibear. Champs in that fashion, but yeah. You full clear as Volibear or gank at 3. Volibear, you never full clear. You always go... You can 3 camp gank, you can 4 camp gank, or you can 5 camp gank. Similar to the uh, Diana game I showed you. You will typically just 4 camp though. Depends on where they end. Let's say you're starting blue side, and there's only starting blue side. You want to definitely clear your, enti your entire blue side, because if he's going bot to top and sees you have like 16 CS ganking bot lane, means your wolves or something were down. You know what I mean? I mean, you could skip raptors, but... You get the idea, right? I'm just trying to like give you an actual example. Like, if they're gonna clear towards your side, clear every camp there before you look for level or a four camp clear into gank. No problem, proactive. Anyways, you guys get the idea, right? These are the kind of champs you should play. What I'm Trivali. I think Camp Tank's pretty shit now. I go Gauntlet. Gauntlet's really nice on him. I think I played him a few uh, days. I stopped playing because he's so boring, but like he's good. I had I had pretty bad games. Okay, like teammates were really bad. I had really unlucky teams. Like. These were like some of the most unplayable fucking humans I've ever seen in my life, but trust me, he's good. Like, look at my teams ever. Like, it's. In low elo, if you're playing a volleyball, people don't know how to play the game. You'll have free. Free kills, free everything. And he does everything just perfectly. Everything Jungle wants to do. Works in other champions should probably look to pick up if the catch actually buffs go through, because he sucks at doing AoE camps, which is why he's weak, but he's been buffed and stuff, and like the meta is like shifting towards him you'll see him very soon in high or low elo not high elo he's not a high elo champ but you have that idea right so he's the kind of champ you should be playing 
But yeah. Anything else we want to go over? We went over the champ's play style. So again, if you're playing a champ like Hecarim, or sorry, old Hecarim for like a month ago, like if my if I'm losing every dragon bot side, like I said, we are taking we're playing top side, strong side, top side. If their mid has no TP, their jungler is not a global champion. We'll put Karthus ult or something. And let's play top side so offensively. Take the rift, play for tower plates, play for tower kill, and just get the tower. It's like one K gold right there. If I can make that happen. So that should be your play slot if you're playing a champ like Hecarim and you know the month a month ago. If you're playing a champ like Volibear, Jesus. If you're playing a champ like Volibear again, you want to just look for early plays, early fights, early dragons. Or same with, same with the rifts, but rift would be more towards your teammate, not you. Depends if you have like a duo or something. Skarner is very strong, very good champ, and very easy. Just comes down to what you're playing and what your play style is as a jungler. If you're playing new new, don't take your red buff and blue buff late game. You're not gonna. Y'all gonna make your job easier. I know it's gonna be like, oh, I can clear faster, I got ability hits, I got perma mana, but are you actually gonna win a game with blue buff on in your late game? What if, what if your Orianna or your Victor has it? What if you take red buff from your, your Kaiza at six items? But you're just dropping your odds of winning. And if you're playing a champ like six item Kindred, maybe red buff might be better on you that game because your AC is a bit weaker. It just comes down to what you're playing and you know what is the win condition of the game. Do you lose anything to FF15? Not really. You can play for scale, but I mean, it's very hard to... You can still affect cross-map plays with the information you have. It's just a lot harder because your lanes don't really offer much. We already went over that cooler boy. I mean, that's like the easiest way. Cross-map, dragon versus rift, top set, etc. You say ju jungle isn't carry roll anymore, but I just strive with a carry playstyle. What do you recommend me to play? Right now, carrying in jungle is like Rumble, Diana, Morgana. Um, those are probably like the top junglers right now in high level I've seen. Nidalee is also like okay, but we are definitely dropping the uh, carry approach for jungle. I think it's, we're gonna go back to tank utility next patch if the catch of XP stuff does happen. But yeah, there aren't really many great carry junglers right now. Zach's really good for Lolo. He's a bit harder because your early killer is really bad. They buffed him, but he's also I think I put him A tier or B tier on Lolo tier list. Probably A. No, Lily is not a good champ to pick up right now. A bit too hard. It's hard to clear because you lose so much HP. Early dragons waste of time though. If it is a consistent win condition for you, early dragons are the easiest way to win games. I mean, just in general, like, if you get Soul in Lolo, hundred percent win. Not hundred percent, but really high odds of winning. Yeah, AP jungles are the best right now for high low. And I mean, you need to play other stuff in low low too, but I would recommend playing the champs I went over. Skarner, Nunu, Volley Bear's God tier. Zach, if you like frontlining and breaking your passive and letting your teammates carry you, but that is that, I think, right? So, I mean, we this kind of went into this, but I, again, the, I talked about the leveling stuff too. Like, if you're, if you're, in a situation where you just got out of base and you're you just spent all your gold but you're really close to a level you still want to farm because you want to get that level off and then look for a play because you want to be at the strongest spot you can be i'm level seven and a half i can do two three camps in my top site i'll do those camps before ganking obviously if like i can spot an actual gank to go for beforehand i can just look for that as well and then go back to farming my camps but i'll need like one camp to get level eight from the xp from the kill or the assist you get the idea so i mean we kind of went over this with the uh, other stuff here Tracking enemy jungler. Let's even find a ball. This is pretty easy to do. But this is kind of team dependent because you either have to ward or they have to ward. Oh, we can do it in one of our, our scrims, no? This is this a game we got invaded in? I think this is a game they invaded us. We had, no, we didn't have to check out. This was game five. Oh, yeah. So you can do stuff to track the enemy jungler, but in general you have to just know like how these champions path. What is what buff? What does Kindred start? She's forced to start a buff every single time. She can't solo wolves. She can't solo raptors. She will always solo a buff. Correct? Champions like Morgana, Kane have a lot more flexibility. Morgana can solo raptors. She can solo. She can actually duo camp raptors red. Same with fiddlesticks. Kane can do start ra or wolves. Morgana can start wolves and do like use two camps, but. End of the day, what helps the most is having information and vision. So let's just get forward a bit. I don't know if I can get much from this game, but we 
board. I think we get early prio mid. Again, it's Silas versus Lucian. We get the counter pick. Five fires playing really aggro. Zoning him off the wave. Slow pushing can get like a crash and reset maybe. A cheater recall, but he ordered my red buff. He sees me here. So he has information that I am in this, you know, in his spot. Let's see when he gets the word up. He actually did this. Yeah, he did word at level one. We thought he faked it, but we thought they were going to invade us again because it was game five. This was game five, right? This might have been game... No, this was one of the earlier games. I think it was game two. This was game two. But we, we are pinging his camp spot side because he warded this late. So we know he's going to start top side. I mean, Lucian wards his Raptors anyways. And I'm not sure if he shows. Yeah, he doesn't show. But we know he's bot side anyways. And we tell our mid laner, we think he's going to invade our bot side because their bot's like hard shoving away. Look at their bot lane. They're like slow pushing and then they start hard crashing it to go invade our, our blue side. So you can tell, I'm like really afraid right now. I don't, I don't see Kindred yet. I think this is the game we got invaded on. Yeah, it is. And then I smite because I'm kind of afraid. And boom, see how they were off the map and they slow pushed this wave into crash. We were ready for this. That's why we told Five would do the exact same thing. And Lucian versus Silas. Silas is gonna have a lot less easier time to move in. So yeah, we didn't have any information. We had the uh, Raptors ward, but it, it accomplished nothing. We just either way knew he was here because he warded my blue side like one minute 10 or so. What was it was the timer? And also we knew they had prior bot lane. So we know he's gonna play for a bot side play. Yo, Pierre, you're fucking nuts. Thank you for 100 subs. Crazy, man. So, I'm gonna show the war one more time. I mean, I guess he can reset, but in general, like, you can only assume if their bot lane's in lane. If their bot lane's in lane and they're playing Thresh Aphilios, Kindred cannot solo a buff. It'll take way too, if she can, but it's like really inefficient. So already here, we knew they're gonna hard shove bot lane. Our Kaiza's counter by, this is like the hardest counter to Kaiza. And we knew he's gonna play for this level three play and we're ready for it. So we'll see what happens here. I hit the Q, I order this for level four. I E blind to block the Q. And they just get fucked. I only have the flash here. I mean, they get completely shit on. I missed my Q barely, but I could maybe walk here through it, but I mean, it's still, it's still a, it's a clean sweep. But you see, like, even though we had the Raptor ward on this guy, we still knew where he was because of the information we had bot side, how they were playing. And I mean, the, the typical path Kindred does, she skips Raptors anyways. So either full clear her top side or do two buffs in the camp. So blue Gromp, uh, red in this case. Here I greed. I didn't know Silas warded this while we were fighting and I die here. So this is actually doing like lower elo. In higher elo, this won't ever happen to you. Your support won't walk to fucking Raptors here, but this is a competitive play game. This is like a 10k tournament. So yes, he w like the mark is top. You're assuming and he has top pro. So I'm like, yeah, he's going to go top mark for free. But Thresh sets up the play here and it's not really greedy. It's just this ward is really good by them and Kindred opts to discard the mark, which ends up being better for us, IMO. Also, I don't even have smite here. And I could maybe live, but if he could E flash, it's kind of hard. So I think either way, this is better for me. I'm up three camps, and yeah, you just I think at the end of the day is you should know what camps different champ takes. So give me an example, chat. Type some champions. I'll tell you their specific paths. Rek'Sai, red side full clear. Rek'Sai, red raptors gromp. Rek'Sai, two buffs uh, gromp or something. Um, blue side level three, you can go for the cheeky level three gank on Rek'Sai. Like if you full clear blue side, level three tunnel back to your red, etc. while you're transitioning mid. <clears throat> Bully bear, same thing as Rex or Rek'Sai. You can red side full clear, you can double buff gromp. Diana, I mean, we, we went over that. Kane, yeah, Kane, this one's more interesting. I've seen Kane's use so many different paths. I've seen like, Wolves, Raptors, Krugs into red, and then you go back to your blue side, and you multi camp your blue Gromp, and then your Wolves are up, and then your Raptors are up, and your like Krugs are up, everything in that seat. Like, you understand? Like, let me see if I can find a, a map here. This is like the most important thing. Let me see. Jungle, if I can find a jungle camp one. Like, the thing on Kane is, like, if you're playing a farm-heavy jungler that has a lot of flexibility and you just want to farm, if you go Wolves, this, 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 and then go here and clear all of these, all these three camps will, will be respawned by the time you're done on your before you reset first time. Wait, what do you mean? What the fuck is that? What happened? 
Wait, was my chair? I think. Sorry. What happened? I didn't hear anything. You guys get the idea, though. This is a path you can do on any jungler with AOE, but it's probably the best on Kane. It was on Discord? I'm not on Discord. I'm not even on Discord. What? You guys are trolling. I, I think you guys are in the VC. That's what happened. But you get the idea, right? So... This becomes harder to do if you're against a champ like Kane, obviously, because you don't know... You have to be able to count CS. CS counting is like pretty important. Every camp gives four. And if you see like, there's several games I'm coaching some like, oh, his Raptors up. And he's like, no, they're not. I'm like, yes, they are. Trust me. And he goes, the Raptors are up. He's like, oh, oh, how did you know? I'm like, bro, you see he's level three. He has X amount of CS. We know what camps he did or couldn't do. And yeah, it would be better if I can find an example for that. Let me see if I can find a game, but I don't think in any of these customs, like you don't really, maybe I can try this game, another Kindred game, another champ that can't really do Raptors early game unless you are playing for five camp, I guess. So we got to obviously go on red side vision. Is this is a game we get, fuck yeah, we lose this game. So we go red side vision, skip forward. We assume he starts top side again. Actually, no, he's, they started our blue, sorry. They started our blue. So I just do wolves because I know he can't be here, right? He's taking my top side. He did really bad. This was a really bad path by him. He did blue into his bot side and went back top. And then, like, again, Kindred's a champ that can't really do a Raptor. It takes too long. So once we do see him, we can only assume X camp is up. Let's see. When does Kindred show? He just hit Scryer. We don't see him yet. We don't have information. Can't see a CS score. But, yeah, he shows here. 20 CS. So what does this tell you? He has double buffs. He's level 3. We can't see the XP bar unless you're, you know, on replay mode like we are. But what, what are the camps you guys think he did this game? He has double buffs. So, 8, eight CS right there. Blue. Red. Right? He's level 3. So, again, another extra camp, whatever. It could be Krugs. It could be Gromp. All three of these camps together. You could also do blue, red or blue red Krugs path I didn't go about for level three, but it takes a bit longer. So we don't even have wards on Raptors, but I know the only camp that's up bot side is Raptors. I can tell because of the way, like how fast he, he got this to the state of the game and how fast his champ is to clear, you know, X camp. I think we, uh, yeah, I got first blood here. Just for that information that I know he's gonna go for crab, I kill him for free and we burn flash here too because my champ fucking owns, but yeah. So look at that, perfect, perfect example. Why do I walk to Raptors guys? Cause I know they're up. Oh my God, I'm smurfing even in fucking replays. Boom, why don't I go for crap first? Cause I know this camp should be taken first. Their mid and bot cannot contest. And unfortunately, five firing is gonna shove the wave mid. Another thing we went over in the past, but no. He, he, he kind of trolled me here. He's like, I need you to push me. He's like, oh no, I'm fine, I'm fine. So I like, I got off Raptors there, but a bit unfortunate, but it's fine. I could have been level five right there. Five fire trolled me, man. I've been level five right now. Five and a half. Fuck. Like, I, like if you watch me in solo queue, like I finished Raptors every day of the week, but five fire wasn't sure if the way was gonna crash. So I just went mid and yeah, I lost big Raptor, I guess. And here, huge play that was really random. We could dive bot here. I'm level... Oh my, I actually f got fucked by this. I was in level five and I ended up dying. If I was level five, this five would have been different. Holy shit, I got, I got trolled by a flat fire. Anyways, so here I'm like, okay, Kindred's top side's up. There is no way, or it's gonna be up. There's no way he's at bot side, right? But I, this was a mistake by me. We were split map. So he could still go to his Krog because like I did early game, correct? And unfortunately, he ends up being in this brush, which isn't really an issue for me. I can't really dodge him 1v1, but he does have items. And I thought my bot had prio. Unfortunately, it's just on an early game. And this ended up being a pretty big deal because I forgot to take into account the map is split. He can run to Krogs from base. He doesn't have to run to his, his Gromp that's spawning in like 10 seconds or like my bot side's gonna spawn. So I ended up giving them a freebie. But yeah, if I was level five, I still die there. Like they have flash and stuff, so. See, even myself, like I don't play against vertical jungling every single game. He can opt to skip his camp there and come to me, so. 
Tarzan giveth, Tarzan taketh. I'm actually really surprised. The first VOD I clicked, we got a good exhibit of everything I just went over. It's really nice. So, yeah, this is this is the easiest way to know. Information from wars gets related to worth the raptors, or I mean, this is a meta where you always do raptors and stuff. So, and yeah, okay. Trinket usage when to swap. This one is quite important. It really comes down to what your goal is. So, I'm playing a champ like Diana. Am I really gonna gank on Diana? If if I can gank. I don't need to clear vision is basically the theory we should have because that means you're overextended or just low HP or they're just dead. Because Diana doesn't really gank well. She just power farms and I mean if you're under tower 1 HP Diana can gank. Any champ can gank that, right? So on a champ like Diana, you basically just want to hold uh, your little trinket the entire game or the entire early to mid game and then swap the sweeper once it's like mid one with like for flanks over the walls and stuff because that's how she functions, right? She wants to play Fog of War and just E flash or ER flash. Um, if you're playing against a uh, jungler like, I don't know, Lee Sin, but the junglers went over Rex. Let me go P actually. Let me just type it before I, so I don't forget. Rex, I uh, give you everyone sex. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to turn sub mode off again. Let's see what the plebs think. Are you guys enjoying this? Is this helping you? We are probably pretty much an hour in already. Holy shit, this one a lot slower than I thought it would. But I mean, I'm enjoying it. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying it too. So I'm going to turn sub mode off. Let me know what you guys think so far. Is this something you enjoy? Is this something that's helping you? If you're shitty one trick, it probably shouldn't help you, but if you're actually trying to learn jungle, it might. All right, great. Good to know, Plubs. Glad it's helping you out. Okay, anyways. Rek'Sai, Lee versus Diana. So when you sit down with Rek'Sai, Lee, they don't ever full clear. If you're full clearing, they're just bad at the game. If they're playing with Rek'Sai, Lee, they know they scale like shit. You're picking Diana. They want to make your life miserable. You're playing Evelyn. They want to make your life miserable. So typically, you'll see champions like late start your buff or something like more like Olaf, I guess. And you want to ward your actual buff at 52 seconds and reset, or like you can ward it while channeling your reset, and you can still get to your you know your cross map. You can also even sell your your yellow for red if you're playing a champ that wants a gank. But you just do this in theory to not get you know three buffed or something because some champs require blue buffs more than others and reds etc like imagine playing Grizz without red buff how the fuck do you gank you can't imagine playing carlos without blue how the fuck do you farm you can't do you know what i mean so it really comes down to uh the champs you're playing into how much pro they have etc one sec jesus okay where was i but yeah so let me uh, show an example of what I would do. If I know where their jungler is starting, I mean, this is kind of hard to show without other people in the game, but so I'm playing Diana. 
So if you were watching our games yesterday against uh, C9 Steam, we know XU cheeses level one a lot. So we knew we had to ward level one. Actually, let me just do that, no? Which game did we, they had to Olaf that one game? Which fucking game was it? This one. But in general, if you're playing like champs like Dan, I'd recommend just holding yellow shrink and just trying to ward their camps, like their cross map, and just knowing where they are, and just knowing what camps are up and what camps aren't up and playing for those camps, camp timers. So, I ward my top side because this is the typical ward you'll see a lot in like, if you watch like Korean jungler splits, it's like the most optimal ward. If anything, you want to ward this way, but I ward this way. I mean, if you're playing against like Lee Sin and Graves, like E over this wall, if they hug this part in properly, you can maybe see them. So if you're playing as like Graves, Lee, Kindred, maybe even ward here instead, like in the center, if you're a blue side and they're red, he, and, he knows, and he knows he starts red, you can go like red into your blue. Like remember the game against Super Metro I did today? I'll watch the bottom of that in a sec real fast, and then we'll go over that as well, but. I dropped my ward, I reset by Sweeper. We know they're invading our red. We even prepared for it, as you can see. And unfortunately, we kind of trolled because we told Alderman to leave. And the moment he leaves, they walk in. So a bit unfortunate, but we can still get a kill here if Leona opts to go around, but they like, they waited for a while here. It take a while to walk here, and unfortunately we don't have vision, so. I could maybe throw a Q on him for vision, but I wanted to get make sure I hit, I hit my Q on the right target and ended up not being the best, so. Let's watch the game versus uh, Mr. Uh, Super Shit Troy we had today, where we play Kindred into Vi. So again, Vi is really weak champ level too. She goes WE, are her main spells. So very volatile. If she can't contest her, her buff level two, you should invade. Same with Elise, she's not the strongest champ level two. She's the kind of champs you want to like go you know, over the wall and try to two buff or three buff or something. So they don't end up warding either. So this is why you should always on a champ where you're really weak level one, ward your blue instead, or ward your red. If I'm playing Nocturne or something, I'm gonna ward my red, reset, walk to my blue, by sweeper, and if your jungler late invades or just starts my buff, I'll see it. So I end up starting red and going to his blue, and he has no information, he doesn't see me here. He doesn't know, he comes in blind. If I was ready and that spells up, he can actually just die here. So, but I know his champions, like I was I was like stunned, I'm like what the fuck is going on? Why is he here? Why do you go red to blue? And I, there's a ward. So why would you hold the ward if you just drop a level one? But yeah, so I have wrong runes this game as well. I don't have PT. I mean, PT is all stronger early game, but Conqueror's better for sustain. And he's not. I don't have smite, and he just runs and doesn't see my teammates, and he has to give up the buff. So this is why you should ward your buff if you're at your most like exploitable. If your champ can't fight level two, ward it at level one. If your champ can fight at level three, but you don't see the angle. Let's say I play Karthus, you're playing Lee Sin, and we started red. What does that tell me? I should probably keep my ward for this situation, right? Lee can't really level two in the base. I'm gonna ward hop here and fight me with his W. You know what I mean? So I would clear my blue side, walk here, start my Raptors, and then pull here, and then maybe like ward here, or get my lander to ward here, or maybe just start, like don't start around just ward here, and I get my lander to ward here or something. Then that's how you make sure I'm gonna be on your second buff as like a champ like Karthus or something. Again, depends on the champs you're playing and how like vulnerable they are. Like Elise level three is so much different than Elise level two. Vi level three different from Vi level two. You want to get them at their most exploitable states. A champ like Evelyn level one, level two, level three doesn't really change much. She can go like W level three. They mostly go two points Q, but still you have to understand that concept. If you're playing against Hecarim, very rarely, or the old Hecarim, you'll see very rarely people having a point in E. Example of this would be the money match. Let me actually find this. Tarzan versus General Sniper Money Match. I think it's game. <laughs> what is this video, Mr. G Snipes? Jesus. I think it's the game he has Kindred in. So it's, a, it's game two, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's this game. So you'll see. So this ends up being a good invade by Kindred, but I'll show you how I spot it out. So my team wards level one for late invade, whatever. This is when I already killed him. It's a bit too early. Hopefully they show me. Oh, I'm still like really ahead. Okay, still really ahead actually. So I start blue side. 
I path bot. What camp? What camps did Kendra do? The one we went over, right? We actually don't even see on this ward. This is not spotted. I wish they showed the vision, but we don't even know he's here. But I still pulled a buff because I know this guy is playing Kindred. He's not gonna like trade farm with me as Hecarim. And crazily enough, I have two points Q here. So if he kites me properly, I can never win, but I have Ghost and Phase Rush, so it, it depends. And here, this is something you can do as well. Pull your buff to this brush, and if it walks away from you, it means enemy jungler or someone's there. What does this say, guys? Enemy kindreds here, because they're all they're all on the map. Kindreds here, and that's why I'm like, oh, I'm pinging for, I'm, I tell my team, like, it's going to be a fight here. I don't have smite, he doesn't have smite either. So we got lucky, kind of. And my smite just came up. The moment, it wasn't up, you'll see. So I was just trying to stall, not DPS it. Boom, smite's up. Boom. It's okay. I don't have my E, but I'm, I'm Hecarim level 2. So my E, my W's down too. Beat his fucking ass. Boom. That's what you sh that's how you should pull it. You shouldn't do the red before it spawns if you're a melee champ. You want to pull it as much as possible. I'm getting good examples. Holy shit. Just top of my head. I like that. But yeah. And Kindred's out of the game. I end up carrying this game like pretty fucking hard. Even though Kindred is good into Hecarim. I mean, we just play for her camps. We could have played for her camps a lot more this game, but we we're kind of, I mean, our bot lane. Like, our champions aren't playing to fight early game, right? They have Leona. We have these champs, so you get the idea. If you know they're gonna invade you and you're a melee champ, pull to that brush. If you are a ranged champion, maybe ward, or just pull either way. But yeah, you have to know the patience bar and the stuff, and knowing how to pull as far as possible. So this should help with that. We went over this, right? No, thank you, lovely. Appreciate that, bro. I think on pink wards, the double pinks is a good in solo queue. Depends on what you're playing. In solo queue, like, if you're a low elo, you should just buy pink wards for, like, if you're going to do dragon, buy a pink ward, do it. If you're going to do rift, buy one pink ward, do it. Like, you don't really play for vision control and vision denial. I, when I coach my clients, I say, just get it one pink, do the X objective, play that side of the map, reset, buy another pink, buy, play other side of the map, etc. Okay. Vertical, I mean, we kind of just did in the last game. I just showed, no, against X XU. I pretty much just showed that, no? The Nocturne game. I guess I can show you how to get the biggest lead possible from it. Yes, Dan is still viable. How many people have you coached? Several hundreds. Not as many as I thought, as you would probably think. So... This is like our second game against them, I believe. Or was it our first? Yeah, it was our first. So we didn't know they would cheese us every single game, but after this game, we started warding every single time. We actually didn't ever even... Did we see them? Yeah, we do see them. So this is the first game after that, we started warding level one every game. But we see them at blue, what does that tell you? It means this side of the map is Kindred's and this side is mine. So I want to get as much as I can. And on, no on Nocturne, I want to get level three ASAP. So I got a really nice leash from Alarim. I keep my smites, going to clear as fast as possible. Level two smite, get more damage off. Wait for my passive to alter those, boom. And here's something I did differently that I'm not being able to do. Like, if you're playing Hecarim, Evelyn, um, Nocturne, and you don't have a point in your E, I mean, for, for Evelyn it's W, for Hecarim it's E, example, you're a lot more volatile in the jungle. And I mean, we do have private mid on top, our lanes are somewhat winning, but even then, they could like reset TP on top if there's a ward or something, and I just want to be as safe as possible. All of my E here. Because if I have two points Q and I get caught, the extra damage won't really do much for me at all. And here's something you should do as well. You definitely want to clear bot to top rather than top to bot because you'll be less close to the crab and you'll be in a more volatile state as well. I'll be more deep in their jungle at X amount of time where it may be set, kind of TP'd and been there. Do you understand that? Because that's really important as well. So why would we do wolves first? Because let's say this guy gets pushed in and then they have like a ward somewhere here. You can just TP afterwards and, and on, on that timer, it's a lot more uh, volatile for me to die. Whereas right now, I just want to get these wolves ASAP and just get towards here, closer to my top player, further away from their mid, etc. So wolves first, and then we multi-camp this because I, I assume I'm safe because my mid and top are winning pretty hard. You don't reset or do anything or leave, the, leave site so I can multi-camp and then... Difference already so far from this, from this uh, map split, they're losing because he's down a camp and he walked back and forth several times. I get the crab. 
I make Leonard TPs. Wave's in a really good spot for him. He can freeze it, which he does. I reset here, and then we see Kendra on Crab, and I'm like, okay. I mean, their bot lane wants to crash this wave in, and TF has to reset, because our mid just reset. So we just walked him face first. What is Kendra's mistake here, guys? He didn't crap push crab bot lane. I know we have Zyra Khan, but I mean these champs are pretty fucking OP as fuck early game too. But he should have pushed crab bot because our mid was in a better position right now because he just TP'd. Fresh reset and they actually use their spells on our rise. So here we get the Rudolph and I know if I just flash E him, he's dead. Boom. And you'll see me make a mistake here. Even though we went over the uh, camp knowledge. I know his raptors are up. I do the raptors and I make a mistake here. We went over why I didn't finish Raptors because Five Fire wasn't sure if he needed me or not. It kind of fucked me for level 5, but it didn't really lose us the game. That's why I just randomly wander mid because I'm like, what the fuck? It crashed, bro. I don't, I don't need to be here. I don't get the Raptor. And then here I do this. But you have to understand, the map is split. So it's not like Kindred cleared her top to bot. I got her top side. So she, in theory, should be at her bot side. Or her, her Krogs are going to my bot side, basically. But instead, she just walks bot and... I get caught off guard here because it's not I'm not used to verticaling so often. I don't vertical and sulky very often and Yeah. That's where I make my mistake. And Kinder's Krugs are up now, so I made a mistake and I gave what I got back. And what made you go to this blue side? Yeah, vision on them doing your really at level one. We uh Urkan just spotted. After this we realized they cheese every game, so we just warded level one every game. As you can see. But yeah, I got a really good leash, I got a really good early game, and I kind of threw it. It's not like a game losing death, but I mean, I was so ahead of, like, right, let's see if my bleed on Kindred right here. Right after I kill her. I, if I take Raptors here, let me see. Okay, if I take Raptors here, I'm level 5, and Crab. Raptors and Crab level 5, 100%, 100%, right? So let's say I do that. Right now, I'm walking a Crab, Kindred's level 3 and 80%, I'm level 5. Game's over. But yeah, I make a mistake, his Krugs were spawning, and I just... I forgot to understand that he's gonna be the bot side only, and this was my mistake on vertical right here. 100% my mistake, but I mean... I don't know, maybe we could've played the 3 with you better, or baited spells, because I did die to their bot lane having spells up, but... Could've also... I mean, if I walk left river, I'm dead to this guy, so I think I'm just dead there no matter what. Just by walking there. I, I had to wait here for this play to be efficient. But I already told you so hard. I mean, if, even at level 5, like, it doesn't win the game. Like, me getting that wouldn't have won this this game. Like, my champ into their champs is very fucking bad. And we did throw our fucking fat lead too, so. Okay. That's vertical for the most part. This one we went over, and I think this is going to be our last topic for the day. It's been an hour and 20 minutes. Holy sh- hour and 10 minutes. So, last topic for today's first seminar ever. I'll answer questions in a bit. Well, right now, I guess. Yeah, level 5, maybe I live, but I don't know, it's hard. Might be a lot tankier. Or a bit more tankier. How do you smurf create lead in smurf queue to 1v9? <laughs> you, I mean, again, we went over this. Champs, play style. If I'm playing Volley Bear, I'm playing a gang. I'm not playing a farm. If I'm playing uh, Diana or old Hecarim, I'm playing a farm and get kills off, you know, on proper lane states. What side do you start with Kha'Zix? I mean, depends. On Kha'Zix, I want the best leash possible. I typically start blues or bot side, but Starting blue is always decent too. I mean, you don't need a leash on Kha'Zix. Like, minimal leash is fine. I like getting level 3 off my blue side. And then seeing if I can go, like, opponent E. And 5 camp ganking or just 2 points Q. On Volibear, you would drop your yellow level 1 and reset for a rat at 52 seconds. So, once you're at a minute in the game, you're already at sweep and running back to your cross map. Master E clear. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they start blue. I don't like there's several. There's like report you can look at. I think there's a guy called like Wuju. I think this is his name. Yeah, you can watch their VODs. I don't I don't play Master. I can't tell you, bro. How did I invade late invade properly? You went to yeah, we're about we're literally at that right now. 
I guess yeah, we, we can talk about that. Yeah, we went over maintaining leads and creating them. How do you know which champ to pick with your team comp? I made a video about this. Like, it's just damage distribution. Like, if I have a champ like Renekton on my team, Set, Pantheon, I want to pick like Elise, Nidalee. Different damage, same lockdown. They're both really got locking down champions and diving. So, you want the same synergy from that. Always starting camps like on X champion depends on um, matchups, yes. Where, what lane you want to play towards. If I have a Janna, Ezreal bot lane, and they have a Soraka, Tristan, it's kind of hard to gank from both ends, right? Unless they're playing really aggro. So I want to path away from that lane. So I could go, if I'm blue side, doing red. Going red, Krug's Raptors, ganking mid level three, or just skipping and going blue and then invading top screen or ganking top. Depends if you want to rush level four or not. Why do you skip Krug in some games? I already went over that, bro. I was like, I don't know if you watched the games, but... I already showed the bot for it. I'll do it one more time. If I can. Did this one? It's not this VOD. I mean, I already showed it. Okay, no, it is this VOD. I'll, do, I'll show it one more time. I full clear top to bot. Again, Volatile lane, bot lane, Blitzcrank versus Thresh. Jin versus Zaya both have no real escapes. I skip Krugs here because they fought bot lane. He's really low. And we push in the wave. And then we just win the game here. We go shut this. So you can go back in the vault. It's really, I talk about it for like 10 minutes. So. Should I dodge promos? If you care about MMR, dodging the best way to climb, yeah. What do you, if enemy team lane invades your opposite buff? I mean, if you are in a champ that cannot like contest, I mean, you should have already rewarded it. So you can know. But if you don't know and it, and it happened, then it would take a lot more context and I would have to watch the game and tell you what to do. What if Kindred rotated after your blue buff straight into blue, her blue side? We would be able to see it or take her too long. I'd be, I mean, like the thing is like, if she would do that, she'd be level two, I'd be level three either way. That's going to do the right side full clear, right? I'd be, I'm a level three knocked result to Kindred. I can just one shot her. I can just flash on her. I flash, eat her, melee range, auto her, red buff slow. And I Q wherever she lands on the fear. She's just dead. That's the thing, like, that's why you want to just rush your level 3 ASAP on Champ like Nocturne in that situation. Okay, we'll just talk about these last two, then we'll answer questions, and we'll let the plebs answer, or send in a few questions as well, and we'll call it there. Level 1 invading. So, again, again, a lot of these customs should showcase that. Let me think. Which one's the best one? Oh, this one's a good one. This one's one of my personal favorites. I'm so glad we have the tournament because so many of these games like are just showcasing what we're talking about. Does it matter what if I start? Yes, 100%. Always matters. Because it just leads to where you're pathing towards and where you're going to go and what your game plan is. Primes get tier list? Yes, you get tier list if you're a sub. Okay. I am playing Olaf. They are playing Elise. They are very heavy bot side. I have MR runes. And what is the game plan, guys? How do we win this game? We have Jinx, Leona. They have Lulu, Caitlyn. If Caitlyn, if, if our bot lane gets ahead, their Lulu cannot play the game as well as Leona. She can't face deck vision. She can't do anything. She can't, do, like, she can't really play the game as Lulu versus Leona from behind. So if we lane evade bot side and split the map, then they can't play the game. So what do we do, guys? We walk bot side. They don't drop the word. If it blew the word here, the game was not as easy, but we walk in, we sweep. We know they have no vision unless, you know, they're baiting us or trapping us. But we lane invade. What does Elise level one do, guys? They tell me to walk around. I do. Wait for a Q. I hit the axe on the... We actually fucked up there on Leon. We should have went for Elise, but... Somehow we still kill Elise here. I guess he sucks, but... Yeah, now map is split. And these are the kind of champs you want to invade on. If you're playing Olaf and you're against Evelyn, Elise, Rek'Sai, really weak level one champs you want to invade. And same thing as last game, I go Wolves first, it's more volatile than Gromp first, walking back and forth, so. So I want to walk downwards after, and yeah, map is split now. He wants to actually look for a play bot, not really doable, I know it's worded. Clear the ward, go to my bot side. And here he's even too scared to go to my top because I have mid and top prior, right? I tell him to ward my top side. Shows on crab, I too crab him. Game's pretty much over for release, right? 
Again, same thing we went over before. I'm not playing a kill Malphite. I clear his ward. He cannot contest the wave. He's too low. And he actually ends up, I guess, knowing he can 1v2 here. And I guess Alarm playing defensive showcases that I'm not there anymore. But you get that idea, right? If you're Hecarim, yes, Hecarim. If I'm playing Olaf and Hecarim, I'm 100% late invading. 100%. Whether it's like him being there for a fight or not, but you should make sure a champ like Hecarim, Fiddle can't get a full play off for free. You want to invade them as early as possible and set the tone. I'm playing Olaf. If I get to late game, I'm fucking worthless. If I'm behind on Olaf early game, GG. So the best way to make that not happen is just to fight him at, when I'm at my strongest. And Olaf level 1 is insane, especially with Ghost and approach velocity. His passive, his base stats, etc. All very good. And Elise, what you gonna do? Throw a fucking W at me? Nice, man. <laughs> like, you don't really accomplish much on a champ like Elise. And again, that's the best way to win games. If you are, you should play at your strongest. And uh, the game starts level one. So put yourself in that position and look at the, look at the jungle diff right now. You'll see this game, he's just so behind the entire game. My character's gonna be up uh, solid 150% XP. A level and a half at five minutes. I get every dragon because I'm so ahead. I hit level 6 off my Krugs here. So here's another thing I, I went over. I guess, no. This is something I want to talk about as well. Um, so we have winning lanes. Right? Do, do I actually go to dragon here? I don't. I actually opt to ward this first because... I don't know. We thought, like, Firefire kind of plays aggro. And, I mean, they have a Lulu. They can't really invade this or gank this. But, in general, I should just want the Krugs here. And... If I had Pryo mid and top, I could have skipped Krugs and done Dragon for 6. I want to be, like, if I'm 6 on Olaf, Polymorph out of the case. Elise Cocoon out of the case. So, I want to put myself in the best situation possible. I want to do my Krugs first level. If Crab is up, I'm going to do 6 and then do Dragon. But here I say, okay, I'm going to do my Krugs first for level 6. So I can be as strong as possible for the Dragon fight. Olaf 6 is game changing. And they even overextend Ball. I don't know if we kill them here. Yeah, we kill one. We knew Elise, or this guy had no flash. And he's just dead, right? So, I took a big kill of value. And boom. Even if there was no kill bot lane, I would start dragging at 6 here. Because they can't, like, look, look at the jungle diff. Like, Elise is the hardest counter. The hardest counter at Elise is Olaf. So, she's even standing mid here getting XP. She's so behind. And If I didn't late invade, what could I do? I mean, I mean, I could just... Like, you have to play for full clear on, on Olaf or Elise if you can't invade. Because you clear faster than her. That's your other win con. I guess. Then here I'm like, okay, I can get Dragon for free, but I want to do his blue and set him even more behind. Because this Elise is so out of the game. He even opts to go for Crab. And this is, I think this was a mistake by me. I think it's just in Dragon here, but I mean, their mid is on timer too because he got killed. So he's on way first. So it's hard to say. I think doing Dragon there is risky because he is, I mean, he has no ult, but. In a lower elo game, you're fine to do whatever in this situation. And in a competitive game like this, it's a bit more risky and could change the outcome of the game. So I just opt to go for Dragon instantly anyways, I'm pretty sure, right after doing Raptors. And this gives me level seven, which is very nice. I guess close to level seven, I push in mid, boom. Farm my bot side again, but yeah. Okay. Runes build for specific matchups. I like this one. Let me see if there's anything I can go over really recent. Oh, there's one Diana. Okay. Diana. Jesus, my, my losses on her are kind of ugly, but... Diana is a champion where she can go two different setups. You can go for the DPS setup that you want to run against, you know, tank melees, because you can't one-shot them, right? You can do a lot of damage in the early game, but as the game progressively gets longer, I do less damage to champ like this guy, because I can't 100-0 him. Same with Silas, same with Thresh. Lee, like these champs, I can kill them early game with the luxury really easily. But again, it's it makes the game progressively harder for myself. So just better have the late game insurance of having conquer because, like, if you have conquer, you're a DPS champion. You're you can go Nashers. You don't have to just rush full AP. So example for this would be this game. This game they're pretty squishy. Their only tank tanks are this and this. But I, if I'm playing the fights properly, I'm hitting these three. So I want to electrocute this game. And instead of going Nasher, they just rush Protobelt or Night Harvest or just better. I think the dash was better this game because these champs don't really have actual dash if they engage on them. So I just want Protobelt this game first and runes are a bit different. So 
Yeah, I, I'd go Bone Pudding Revitalize sometimes. Depends on the matchup. So if it's like early in fighting, yeah, for sure. But there are like I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Like for jungle, it's really simple. I guess I'm gonna show like another champ and Elise would be one. The thing about Elise is you don't want to conquer every game. But when I run conquer, I just win every game. So same with Elise. If I'm against a lot of melee champs this game, they have Irelia, J4, Galio. I'm not doing much damage in late game. I can build items through that, but in theory, I want to have Leandris. I want to have Nashers too. I want to be able to DPS them and fuck them over from just raw DPS, not bursting. Not just using spells. I want to auto-attack them to death in spider form or just stack Conquer on them. I'm going against champs like this. Vladimir, Kane, Zed, Kaiza, Thresh. Thresh obviously is a bit more tanky, but these other four champions... I, I guess Vladimir Conquer is like debatable, but for these three champs, I'm pretty sure this is red... Blue cane, so electrocute is your best bet. When I know Elise, I just run it every game because it's. If I'm playing Elise, I want to be able to snowball as much as possible, and if I'm picking fights incorrectly, it means like I just picked them incorrectly. Not going. I mean, I know I have no flash, so I'm not gonna put myself in the worst position possible. It just helps you so much. If you proc your, if you have conquer fully stacked and you get your trap proc, you can just do like one v twos and one v threes pretty easily. So yeah. Plus 30 minus, I mean, this was before, yeah. Those were the days when this account was getting plus 30 at 1k LP. Is there any other champs you guys want me to go over? I mean, it's pretty simple. Like, I can't do all 150 champs in the game, but the ones you guys want in chat, I mean. It's like, Lee is another like, good example. Like, if they're full of squishy, I don't want Conquer, I want Electrocute or Dark Harvest or something, right? If they're full tanky, I mean, I already fucked up by picking Lee, but I can still go conquer. I mean, I should. Olaf's a good example as well. Okay. This is a bit more different. It's same primary, but it's different secondary. So I'm playing against champs like Samira, Camille, Karthus, Lucian, that are very mobile and I need to be on top of. I want to go approach velocity, right? Because I want to stay on top of them. If I have the first Q, I can chase like the, the Lucian or something or the Karthus. Whereas if I'm against champs like Rengar, Irelia, Echo, they're gonna be on top of me, I can opt to go for this setup instead because I'm not gonna have to chase them. They need to be on top of me to do damage anyways, right? So just having these runes are a lot more efficient. And I did this in one of our games today actually, or yesterday. Um, this game, they had, is this game? No, it's not this one. It's the other Echo, Olaf game. This game, they have, this team played a lot of melee bruisers. So this is a perfect example. They like they have Aatrox, Diana, Set, Galio, Kaiser. The only champ I want a first velocity into is Kaiser, right? These four champs to do damage, they have to be on top of me. So what do we run? Same exact thing. So this is another good example you guys can utilize. You don't have to run the exact same runes every single game. I'm seeing a lot of grays, but I mean this one is like more like what you prefer. So this game, they have four really squishy champs that are pretty vulnerable, but they're also they, they're basically like high range. Like this champ's considered high range, which is not really a range champ, but you get the idea. Like these champs, I need phase rush to be on top of them, and instead of going my typical shield battle on Gale Force, I need to be on top of them as much as possible. Ezra's like one of the hardest counters of Grace because she just he perma outranges me, right? He can Q me, he can E me. I can't really touch him unless I'm behind him or I chase him down river or something with like phase rush and water walking. So. Gale Force really important. I mean, even that I should probably like, I know I went Ignite pretty bashful and flash this game, but yeah, Gale Force game with Phase Rush, perfect. Let me see. Now we see champs like this. We see Kled, we see Volley Bear, we see this, we see this. Low range ADC wants to go in, and then this. What does this tell you? Fleet Footwork game, right? And the damage kind of indicates that I am in their faces and they cannot even kill me. Because I don't need the extra movement speed. I need the extra minimal MS with extra healing and being able to like reposition and just drain tank them as much as possible. This is when you go fleet. As far as the secondary grades, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just phase rush versus fleet. You can go this, you can go sorcery, whatever you prefer. I do. I've been trying sorcery, so I've been double adaptive. I like this. It does a lot more damage, I feel like. But end of the day, it comes down to what you're against, right? This game, I could have gone fleet. It's nice against these two, but it's bad against these three. It just comes down to what you're mostly against. So, There's your grave setup or setups. Okay, I think we're going to... I mean, it's been a fucking hour and a half. This is a lot longer than I thought it would be. So, I mean, 
pretty good for our first seminar, I think. I think we want I don't want to do like every topic in the world so we can't have any actual information for the next seminar in two weeks from now. So pretty happy with that one. So next one will be in two weeks from now. May 16th. I guess it'll be 4 p.m. EST and it'll, it'll be subject to change, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy the seminar. I'm gonna turn off subscriber mode. I'm gonna answer questions from us. We have a few more sub questions and then we're gonna do plebs. So, okay. Any other questions you wanna go over before we call it, gentlemen? Grace is broken. Yeah, it should stay available. Say you start red and wall hop drag pit. What champs are weak to level two invaded ground like Karthus? Karthus isn't that weak level two. It's more like champs that are really weak level two. So if let's say on blue side I go red to enemy Gronk because I know he started blue. He's playing like on a Shivana. Shivana wants to preferably get a blue side leash or a bot side leash, but you can also start red. It just comes down to like the information you have. If you're gonna go for that path, worth their buff level one. Whether you worth their red or blue is good because most junglers again only start buffs, so you can know where he started. Again, he he might be on Gromp, so you can definitely like, steal that and kill him. It's mostly just steal though. Very helpful. Glad to hear, bro. Why do you build the clips on Nocturne? If they have again similar to Olaf. If they're going to be on top of me, I'd rather have that. Like, Gorge Anchor is, like, okay, I guess. But Eclipse, I like it for the extra. It gives, it gives like, I forget if it's Armor Pen or Lethality. It gives one of them, so whatever. HP Rune just outweighs Armor and MR at level 9, so... If you know you're going to play for full Queen's Rush levels, that's your best bet. Love you too, man. We went over that, Leo. Like, we went over all of this. I told you what you should do if you're playing X champion, Y champion, and how you should do it. Again, in the future, I'll have, like, better examples, but maybe we'll watch even, like, some people's VODs. Like, go through them fast, but... Another King stream for the 3k goal. Holy shit, we're at the 3k subs almost. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you all. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, whether you're sub or not. In the future, like I said, we're going to try to get our subscriber streams available. I don't know what the fuck happened, but yeah, hopefully it helped you guys that can't actually subscribe. Why's my mouse weird? Yeah, so odds available. Best champs to get to diamond again. Bro, I went over that and I have a tier list. You're a sub. You can see the tier list. Just look at that. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Good shit. How did I play Adlin earlier? We are. Are you guys even listening? There's no shot you're serious unless you just joined. I said, if you're playing really weak level one champs, I know you're, like, if you're volatile level one, like, let's say the was like Olaf going to work level one. He's less. He's not going to bait you level three as Olaf. Very lower chance. More games in Pisslow, what do you mean? Yo, Smith, thanks for the five. If it subs. Are people even listening? I talked for an hour and a half straight. I have no voice left. How do you know which... Oh my god, bro. Are you guys trolling? How do you know which time to go with your team comp? I give an example of Nidalee, Renekton, Pantheon. Like... You have to know damage distribution, win cons, like are you playing early or are you playing late? Like if I have a Kassan in mid, I can't pick a Kindred because I want to play for Marks, right? Even though we I have AD and he's he's AP, it's harder because mid lane dictates crabs and like dragons and stuff. And this Hector is bad and I don't want to offer or bother. How to first clear is Karthus. Okay, at least I added a troll face. Anyways. Enough questions for today. If you have any questions, I'm gonna make us you can ask in the sub general chat in Discord. Just tag me, and if it's not a stupid question, or just message me. If you're a sub, I'll I respond. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the sub seminars. I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do anymore. I'm fucking tired, but I'll turn sub mode off, and we'll see what the plebs think or thoughts about the stream.